So now we have a pretty interesting cubist drawing, but now we're gonna add color to it. So we're gonna be working with two sets of color today. We're gonna be working with the warm colors, which are colors that you would see in a campfire. So all of the reds, orange, yellows, all of the ones on this side of the color wheel are the warm colors. Cool colors are ones that you would see in the ocean. So all of the purples, blues, and greens on this side are the cool colors. So I'm going to start off with warm colors. And everything that's a still life piece is going to be warm. So I'm going to use acrylic just because that's what I want to use today. <laughs> you can use whatever color medium you want to use. I'm going to use these two colors of acrylic. They are the warm colors, and this is what I'm going to use to paint the sections inside of the still life. So grab that. Let me grab a paintbrush here. Okay. So to start off with, you don't want these two colors, um, you don't want two of the same color next to each other. So I'm going to start with red and just the still life. Now remember, I'm not doing the background yet, just the still life. This section I'm going to make red. So this is one of those things where you're really going to have to pay attention to what you're doing because... I'm not painting the whole jar red, just the part of the jar that is in this section where I drew the line to divide it. So you have to watch two different lines. You have to watch your ruler lines and your still life lines. So that's red. I don't want these two to touch the red. I don't want red to touch red. So I'm gonna come over here to this section then of this jar and paint it red. Going around that bottle right there because it is a different piece of the still life. So you're dividing up, not only separating the background from the still life, but you're also separating parts of the still life. So there I have red, red. This up here, this section right here could be red. If you get caught in a situation where there's no way to um, not have two reds touching each other, if you're just working with red and yellow, you can always use some of that red to mix up, and red and yellow to mix up some orange to bring in a third warm color to kind of help with that. But so far, this one's working pretty well. And then I'm going to do this part here red. Moving on to the lemon. Okay, now I'm going to move over here to the paint bottle. That's going to be yellow. That's going to be red. So now I have that tricky spot right there. Um, hmm. I might fix that by drawing another line. Let me see here. If I drew... Line right there. There you go. I heard someone say the other day that art is a series of problems that you are given to solve. <laughs> so we just solved a little problem right there. And then I made a new one. <laughs> this piece I'm putting red right here is going to cause a problem over here. Yellow, red. Okay, 
I may want to mix up some orange here in a second. Let's see here. Let me come up here and do this. Might want to do that orange. I think I'll do. Okay, I'm seeing some areas that it's going to be unavoidable to, to have two colors, the same color side by side when working with just two colors. So I'm going to put the lid back on these so I can control it a little bit. And I'm gonna mix up a little bit of orange to add to my warm colors. Okay, that's going to help a lot. <laughs> so let's see here, over here where I was having this issue, I'm going to paint this section of the lemon orange. There we go. Then that could be yellow, this could be orange. orange. So I'm going to add some orange over here, even though it's not necessary. I'm going to add some just so I have this color on this other piece of the still life to tie it all together. I might switch to a tiny brush to do this tiny area right here. I'm going to do this little piece right here, orange. Okay, now I can do the rest of my still life in yellow. I've kind of solved some of the problems I was having there. And I can do the rest in yellow. The reason we're separating the warm and cool colors on this is that it will make the still life painting come out from the background. Warm colors come to the front of a painting, cool colors move to the back. And what that means is warm colors draw your eye. So when you see a warm color in a painting, that's where your eye goes. That's what's most important to your eye. So whatever is most important in your painting, then especially on something like this, you want to make that a warm color.
Okay, so now we have our still life done. So now it's time to move over and do the background. And I'm gonna use these two cool colors for the background. Now let me say I'm gonna start with two, two, two cool colors. I may need to add <laughs> another one like I did with the warm colors, but we're gonna start with these two and see if I can't work it out. I'm also switching to a larger brush because these sections are larger. So, start with this turquoise color. Just gonna work my way around the painting with turquoise and see if I can hop, skip, and jump around and not have to have two um, sections of turquoise together. That's the goal. We'll see what happens. Switch into a smaller brush. mapping out a plan there. Now I'm using a flat brush. If you're using the round brush that came in your watercolor kit, that will work just fine. It just may take a little bit longer. I'm using a large flat brush on this. I'm using the edge of it, the edge of the bristles, to work up along the edges of that shape. and then use the belly of the brush, which is this part of the bristle right here, to smush the paint in, like that. This one's gonna be really tricky for me because I've got this section right in here that's really detailed. So I'm gonna start with this big brush and then I'll switch to a smaller one when I get to that. I could probably work those with it, just the edge of my brush, but now I'm gonna switch it up. 